one of the more, I think, interesting or even fun parts of chemistry involves the S-curve that comes from a pH titration of an acid and a base. So in this case, we have an acid analyte down in the beaker. And we have a base. Uh, both are supposed to be about 0.1 molar. So, so we have a base in the burette or the pipette. In this case, we're doing a dropwise titration from barrel pipettes. And what I've done is I have read, in my case, my data from the uh, graphic analyzer software. I've read that into the Logger Pro software, which is a more powerful software from Vernier. And what we want to find is the inflection or equivalence volume on the S-curve. That's where the millimoles of acid and millimoles of base are the same. Now, let's look at, this is a good part of the S-curve that I got in my own data when I did the titration. And as you can see, right about here, the curvature of the S-curve, it starts down here and it kind of swoops up with a positive curvature. And from here on out, it's negative. It swoops kind of down on its curvature. So somewhere in here, we have the curvature changing, and that's the inflection point. That's the equivalence point in this titration. So, in this case, we didn't standardize the pH probe, so the equivalence point is not at 7. Here's 7. The equivalence point seems to be closer to 8 on the pH scale, so 7, 8, 9. We didn't standardize, so even though we know that all we're doing is making sodium chloride water, and so it should be at 7 or a little lower with the carbon dioxide in the air, uh, we didn't standardize this, so the equivalence point is not 7. Now, the first derivative of any function turns out to be the slope of the line at that point. We get that by drawing a tangent to any curve at that point, and then we just do rise over run, the change in pH in this case by the change in volume. The Logger Pro nicely does that math for us. Here is, for instance, a point on the line. This is not the equivalence point. We have this point on the line right in the middle of these two, and if we were to graph, uh, do a best fit straight line on these three points, we get a slope that is very close to the slope at this point on the curve. And that's 0.2995. Here you can read it right off the Logger Pro output. You have the same kind of thing available to you on the graphical analysis. Now, if you then graph the slope of the pH against the volume, you get a curve that looks like this. This is very much like, since it's, it's actually a positive curvature on this line, and this is what it looks like up to the equivalence point, and this is what it looks like on that upper part of the curve where the pH curve is curving downward. And it may be obvious, I don't know, to me, it's obvious that the maximum of this first derivative graph occurs at the inflection point volume, somewhere in here. You can probably see that the maximum occurs when maxim maximum of the curve occurs up here someplace, when instead of curving up, it starts to curve down. So it's like the uh, object being thrown upwards and when, where does it start back down so you can catch it? So the slope of the line here, when it turns over, is going to be zero, just for a millisecond. Now, we take, then, the slope of the slope, which is the second derivative, and we graph that 
versus the volume. And as you can see, it that, that slope gradually gets bigger and bigger until it hits the equivalence point here. This is, remember, this is the slope of the slope. So where the slope started to turn around, you see it coming up. And then that slope gradually, or the slope of the slope gradually gets smaller until it's zero. That's the equivalence point. So all you have to do is find out what that is by dropping a perpendicular. Wow. We wanted, so we, we thought we made 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide and 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. And if we had, then the 15 drops of acid would be neutralized by exactly 15 drops of base. And sure enough, here it is. You've got 15 drops of base. Therefore, your, at least in my calculation, the molarity of the acid was in fact 0.10 molar. Hopefully that's helpful. Now, in your case, you may want to use a different method if you don't have access to getting the second derivative. And so we'll go back up to the original here. And there's a lot of ways you could do this. But quite frankly, my favorite is just to take the midpoint of this line between here and here. You know it's somewhere in there. So you're going to be real close to the equivalence point if you just take the midpoint of this line and find out what the volume is, because volume's down here. Find out what the volume is and use that for your uh, V acid times M acid equals V base times M base calculation. Then you can write that calculated molarity at the bottom of your report page in your lab notebook, and then you've got full credit. Hope this is helpful to you.